go ahead and do that. What do we do? Facebook Live or YouTube Live? Maybe Facebook Live. No, that's Whatever dangerous. You want. That's dangerous. All of that shit's dangerous. I don't it's, know. All, it's all the same shit. It's all the same. Okay, yeah, Facebook Live. They just They'll both get you. It seems like I have to be a little bit nicer with stuff sometimes because you know if I talk to Egyptians now and <laughs> they're like, it's like I don't want all the Muslim people to be like, like oh my God, we're, she's going this out. But I was like, I say whatever I want. I'm I'm not Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. God, I hope that part wasn't on there. Shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think it was. <laughs> Sorry, girl. <laughs> okay, let me stop the live and start it up. Mm, yeah, you should. <laughs> it's okay, because I yeah, I'm gonna stop that live and then start over. Okay. The yeah, because yeah, it said live, you are now live streaming, and then you just kept going, and that was the part that you were like, I'm not Muslim. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> my life my life of accountability is hard <laughs> okay okay it's streaming live again that's what it says over here we're we're live oh my god okay yeah i see it <laughs> and so let's make the view gallery here i am women at a stars the first lady erica your cosmic mama and i'm here with aurora diamond heart you say hi hi guys Teen Ra, the super Hello. soul and scott savoy what's up Galactic Reporter. This is titled What I Did During Summer Break. <laughs> it's kind of childish, but it's kind of not. Um, we all had time to spend together in May when we went to uh, the Journey to the Truth retreat. And it was fun and it was exciting. It was the first time I got to really meet Aurora and speak to her. It was the first time I got to speak to our King Ra. And I've, I've spent time with Scott before, but um, we just, I really enjoyed meeting you all. And I'm going to tell you one thing, maybe that might be new to you. What I really enjoyed was when we hung out with you, Scott, and you were doing the cookout at the house thing. It was like short, tall, fat, skinny, old kids. It was very inclusive environment. Sure. I was just so impressed by people and the amount of love and positive energy that was there. And it really, you know, before I went, I was like, I don't know, I don't know these people, you know, I don't know how much folks gonna be drinking or doing whatever. But then I was just like, so put at ease by how loving everybody was and how it wasn't like the mean girls or the pretty girls or the cool boys. Like it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that at all. It was just like, everybody is welcome, black, white, didn't matter. And uh, I really appreciate that. It was really nice that all the hearts there. But even with that whole um, trip, that was one of the most amazing, um, conferences I've been to, whether it be business, school, or disclosure community that I've ever been to. Because going out to town with people and spending time with people in, in the real world is not always so cool. Because <laughs> you, you can really see, you know, people coming out of pocket. So I really enjoy meeting you all. Um, and Scott, I was going to ask you, um, during your day-to-day, -day, I don't know if you were inspired by any particular part of the conference that you would like to talk about. Well, I tell you, what, all, what always inspires me is like, this is like, <clears throat> these meetings are very important because most of us are kind of isolated with the way that we feel and the way that we are, are, are you know, our level of awareness in the world, you know what I mean? Most people call us crazy, 
most people call us conspiracy theorists, especially in our day to day life, you know, and at these conferences, I mean, people say it all the time, but it's very true. You, you get to be yourself. You know what I mean? You, you actually hold any type of con uh, conversation and anything that can pop up in your mind. Nobody's going to not only are they not going to think you're crazy, but they might be able to even expound upon it. You know what I mean? You get into in-depth conversations. You actually get retorts like because you can you can I'm sure we all have somebody in our life that actually listens to us. You know what I mean? And, and, and they're there and they're, it seems like they're interested in what we're saying, but they, they never do their own research. They never have anything to add to what we're saying. You know what I mean? They're, they just listen. But at these conferences, you, you actually get feedback and you get when you when you have a theory or something, somebody gives you another information to your theory and you're like, holy shit, I didn't even think about that. And it's great. You know what I mean? And, and there's so many other things about it, too, because at the end of the day, we are all. Uh, we're a star season soul tribe, you know what I mean? And when we get together, it, it feels so good and so natural. And like, we're family, you know, and we're, we're is as limited time as we spend together. Shit. I, I feel a lot closer to a lot of you than people that I spend a lot of time with, you know? So that's what you I know, love. When, when, you, when you talk about expound, expound, expounding, that was the funny thing because the way the, the lunch and dinner tables were set up. Yes. We would go see something, you know, a class or two, and then go have lunch or dinner. And it was like a breakout session. And it was like, it was like TED Talks going on at every table. It was it's just like, if you know who you sat next to, you didn't know what kind of cool information you were going to get. And Absolutely. I, I'll let anybody speak on that. I don't know, Aurora, um, how you felt? How did you? I feel about the the whole conference in general. Yeah, oh, I, lo I loved it. Like this is what I look forward to all year long is getting together with like pretty much the same thing that Scott was saying. Like this is the place where I get to really be myself and know that people get me to a certain extent, you know. And so it's literally these conferences that keep me going, you know, in life until the next one, you know, because there aren't many people that can really listen and even hear me out like in my general area. So yeah, this conference for me was probably the most relaxing conference I've been to. Like the most, um, it was like a, a family reunion now at this point, like that nervousness of getting to know everyone's kind of gone away now. And now I just feel like, Oh yeah, there's that person. And there's that person. And there's that person. And, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Arkeen, did you, did you have um, something to add to that? Sure. Um, when I want me going to the conference was a pretty big deal for me. I feel like it, it literally changed my life um, because I get, you know, comments of support and things like that, I guess, on my YouTube channel. And, you know, with the I guess the work I do or whatever you want to call it, there's there's definitely supportive comments. But when I w went to the conference, it was like I got to meet these people that were directly affected by my testimony and, you know, me putting myself out there and saying what I say. And the support was really tangible and palpable when I was actually in person meeting these people. And also I had like just some amazing experiences as far as people that I met that I've served with in the programs that that's how I met them was being at the conference. And um yeah, it was just, uh, it, it basically for me is what it did is it, it, it built this, it gave me this momentum, like it built this momentum for me and then pushed me forward to take the work that I'm doing more seriously. And the fact that like, you know, interviewing people every week or twice a week, you know, doing it as often as possible and getting this information out there as frequently um, uh, as possible because like, it's important. Like it, may, it just kind of put things into perspective for me, like, whether or not the the masses are awake and aware and whether or not they want to accept what we're talking about like we we have our tribe and we have the people who do understand and we have we're all putting in the work like we all have got our own youtube channels we all got our own things we're doing we we're putting in the work because we recognize that it's necessary to, to wake up other people and the beautiful thing about it that is synchronistic in a way and it's, it's almost like a it, it almost feels surreal as you see these UAP conference hearings and all this stuff going on and you see the the normal people the normies or whatever you want to call them the people that really aren't in tune to the stuff like we are 
they're they're becoming more receptive to it and they're understanding that okay well there is some truth to this this isn't just like some hypothetical thing like some loony people are talking about on the internet like no we've been telling the truth the, the whole time i guess it's just like one of those things where it just it just made me realize that we're doing the work it's like the groundwork we're like the ground troops for this disclosure thing and i don't know i could just feel the energy of being there where it's like like we're creating a sort of shift in consciousness I think that we are making more of an impact than we realize. I hope that's not just hopeful thinking, but it really, it felt that way when I was there. And it's, I feel like it's important to experience things like that, where you like realize you matter. And not only that, like you realize all the other people around you, they matter. And like, just this, this feeling of importance and that like, okay, this, this needed to happen. And I'm glad that I came here and I'm glad that I was a part of it. And yeah, it just, it just pushed me forward. Like meeting Tony who, triggered my memories in a way well i already had memories but like then seeing his video and realizing like it grounding me in reality and then just ending up talking on like a a round table with them it was like surreal and it just made me realize like okay like if this is what happened within like a year and a half two years like where could i be further down the road like i must be making an impact right that's what it did for me it made me realize like there is an impact being made I love that because, um, and I'm going to say this, hey to Tyler, hey Susan and Maggie, they're watching and they said this is a great lineup. So I appreciate you all supporting us and um, just chiming in. Um, um, I thought it was super cool because here you were, you have been interviewed by James Rink before and you got your own channel and stuff. But then it's like, the funny, it's always the coolest to meet Tony Rodriguez, who's like been doing this for a long time and James and even um, one person I met, the um, Jessica Jones. And I was like so hyped to meet a female um, who was into crypto, cryptozoology and of the female Bigfoot huntress. And the minute that we walked in, she was like, hi, I'm just, I was like, oh my God, it's Jessica. And then she was just like, like, like it was, it was, it was as if we'd met before. And we're like, I don't know. It was just so beautiful. Like nobody was trying to be like. Everybody was on the same level. Right. Like not the older people weren't like, calm down young buck. And then the young people weren't like, okay, old people get out of the way. You know, it wasn't any type of, uh, separation it was all just beautiful in that aspect and I think you really hit on something really important that I noticed in 2020 because I felt like in 2020 people were like oh my god it's Laura and oh my god you know watching all the different channels and I was really uh, adamant amongst my own friends no your voice is just as important as anybody else's and the whole idea of putting other people on a pedestal how we got F in the first place. So do not feel that what you have to offer is not as important as others. And for me, it was really cool because I had some theories and I was running stuff by people and I was like, I don't think anybody listens to me, but people were like listening and I was like, you know, so I got to, you know, run my theories by other people and have them basically um, confirm things for me that I have been feeling that whole time too. And I do think it's important that each person, whether you have a book to write, a poem, um, artwork, whatever it is that you have to contribute. I noticed that people just had so many different things to contribute. And then also kind of like what we're talking about now is you started off here and then you're moving and progressing. People's artwork, they were just discussing how, how things develop for them over time. And we were just watching that. And yeah, we we just need more of that. So did anybody have any special plans? Like I'm going to get this done this summer. Yeah, I definitely did. I don't mean to hog the whole conversation, but I just need to realize that I need to take my channel more seriously. And like, I have goals that I've been trying to reach. Like I made a song for my channel. I made a logo. Now I need to like make it so it's at the beginning of every thing and just trying to make it look nicer and like make it so like people might it might catch normal people's eyes or just people in general but yeah just that's basically been the goal is just oh yeah and putting it on spotify things like that like that's that's what it made me realize i need to do and i've, and I've been working on it one step at a time and it, yeah it feels really good that's cool stop 
Yeah, I uh, I wish I had something going, but I don't. But uh, I'm open to anything. If anybody has any ideas, <laughs> the best dad you could be. <laughs> yeah, I would say mine probably is just something similar to um focusing on getting some my channel more developed. You know, um, other than that though, uh, mainly just working. Just trying to work and keep on pushing out the live streams that I do and take care of the kids and find my way out of a bad situation, really. Right. I was going to say finding joy, too, because I remember my first year, I was really hype about learning tarot and learning all, all these different things. And then I came into a point of being where I was just learning to just be and be content and observe and find joy and happiness, but you just hit a very good point of anchoring in the joy in your life and, and making your personal life better. Um, I don't know if you, if you have advice for people based on what you're going through, what you've been through in the past, or even these last few years, how are you finding joy? Because as we discussed before this even started, like, I'm seeing the monetary system acting crazy, gas going up and food going up. I'm seeing more homeless people and things like that. It's like, how, how do you focus and find joy and be able to help heal others when there's all this chaos around us? And you as a healer and as a teacher and a mom, how are you finding that? Journey. Well, um, it's not been easy. I will definitely say I have also struggled and asked myself that same question um, many a times. But uh, I think ultimately, I try my best to stay in the present moment. And I try to remind myself, you know, I try to enjoy the comfort um, that's around me right now, like the telling myself this is I'm, I'm in a safe place, um, focusing on my children. And having the interactions with them, like doing all the things that like the little things that sometimes I used to put off because, oh, I'll have time. I'll have time to do that later. I'll have time to play that game with them later. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to grow up faster than I realize, you know, so I've just been really trying to make sure I um, take the time to do these little things with them and, and, and spend time in nature, you know, and really just, um, yeah, connect with the animals and connect with the earth. and like I said, being in the present moment, I think that is the, the and music for me, music is a big one, allowing um, music to come into my life and to um, oh. find joy through that, you know? Yeah. Like, cause you know, I really tr truly believe that um, there's magic in music and when a song comes to you, especially out of nowhere, I, I feel like those are, you know, messages for you to hold on to, especially if it gets stuck in your head. And it starts looping. You know what I'm saying? You know, that, that this is completely as a side note about that. But, you know, I, I was thinking about this earlier today. You know, they say that that is one of the ways I heard that that was one of the ways to um, stop, like, the voice of God technology or whatever is, is to be able to have a piece of a song looping in your head. If you just have it looping in your head, that, that's a way to block it. I, I, I forget where I heard that, but I thought that was very interesting because I always have. Um, a song, usually something looping in my head like that. And so just pay attention to what randomly comes up in your mind during the day, because these are, you know, these pineal glands, they're little receivers, you know? And so those things matter. And if that's why awareness, that's what that's all about. Self-awareness. That's what it's all about is being aware of what is going on in your mind, because it's your little computer system that's meant to help you direct you and give you discernment about what, what path, what path you're taking in life. You know, and if your if your goal and my I know mine is if my goal and intention is that I want to be on my my path and my timeline of highest love and joy for me and all of Earth and her creatures, then I really have to pay attention to those things and, and keep that as my goal, because that's what's going to allow the little the nudges that are going to direct you towards um, those experiences that are going to lead you to those most joyful moments. And I think once I got that intention clear inside myself, that is what actually led me to this moment, even being here with all of you guys. So that is my answer. <laughs> that is how I find joy. 
Yeah, I think you I think you really hit a good point when you say you got to start living in the now and in the moment, you know, because that's very important because that's one of their main uses of the fear is that, it, it, is that you're you're thinking in the future and how they're going to get me in the future because if we if we think like that, I mean, things don't look good, you know what I mean? But if we focus on the now, <clears throat> that future might not come about, you know, because it's 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 like they say, fear doesn't exist. You know what I mean? We're, we're worried about something that might not even happen. You know what I mean? Something in the future that hasn't even happened yet might not ever happen. You know? We, yeah, right. Yeah. That yeah, robs you of the joy right now. now. You know? And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it happens to all of us. I sit there and sometimes I'm like, things, these these outer things start piling up. Like, uh oh, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And then you just gotta stop. Stop that for a second. Sit back and take a breath. You know what I mean? And, 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 and know that you're going to be okay because you usually are or you always have been you usually will you know what i mean and, and don't stress that shit so much because that's that's most of the thing people do is stress over shit that might not ever happen you know <clears throat> so that's an important point you made we gotta live in the now 100 percent, 100 percent. it definitely it definitely robs us of our joy if we aren't if we're focused on all those fears and actually as conscious as manifestors creator beings when we use those emotions and focus on those fears all the time, we start to create those things, you know? So really getting out. Absolutely. And that's, I think, I think that's what, you know, a lot of us, that's how, if we hadn't been switching out of that belief system, we would never have resonated enough to find each other. So we are the ones that it, if we gather enough of us together with those intentions and the, and the joy in ourselves, okay. Um, we can manifest more for even other people and help wake more other people up. But it's going to be, I feel like it's just going to be a slow, it's kind of a slow crawl right now. It you isn't know? for people who are, you know, star seeds, super soldiers, assets, whatever you want to call them. It's a million different names for whatever we are. And we're, um, oh man, I'm having a brain fart. Um, oh yeah. Our bliss. We need to have our bliss. Um, that's something that like if you're not in a joyful state and if you're not in a state of like like obviously it doesn't mean like toxic positivity like you have to address your darkness and the world's darkness but like having our bliss like being in a state where you have joy and where you're confident in yourself like that allows us to be able to manifest a better reality and make an impact on the world around us and it is kind of important, you know, the, the, the whole, to reiterate it, to stay in the moment, to focus on what you can change, what you can do instead of feeling powerless about what you can't do. And, um, you know, like with anything, you just have to start from the ground up with the, the goals you want to accomplish and the things you want to do. And that's all you can do. And yeah, music and, and nature is one thing. Personally, I've been just realizing like, I don't know why people live in big cities. It doesn't make any sense to me anymore. The older I get, like this being in nature is just so perfect and so much better. And I don't know why we cram ourselves in these small cities and put ourselves in this like low vibrational state. Like you can just tell when you're in these big cities, like, and it's just, yeah. So being in nature is really important. I think like, even if you live in a big city, just try to spend time outside and the, and the sun and um, it maybe get out to a, like a good nature spot nearby as, as often as possible. And just, yeah, I don't know. Just try to try to find your bliss and keep your bliss and don't feel selfish about it. It's not a negative thing to have joy when the world is in a, in a place of despair. Um, that's like, you know, like a program, like it's okay to still find joy in the world because what are we fighting for anyway? We're fighting for that joy. We're fighting for the, the you know, for peace and for, for uh yeah you know bliss and like all those things that matter like you know absolutely um, so it's not it's not like something to be guilty about not something to feel bad about despite the fact that yeah there are a lot of problems in the world and if you can do something about it you should but like i said you got to start with what you can do and you can't focus on the things that you can't do that is what i call like your army of one because if, if you try to take everything around you in all at once that's like trying to eat an elephant right you cannot eat an elephant you have to eat it one bite at a time where your one bite at a time is what can i do to make myself better 
What can I do in my home? What can I do in my energy and my field? Um, the people and relationships that I actually have. How can I be a better friend, mother, um, father, happy. whatever? The people are important. That's what's important. And you know what is disturbing? I hear people say, oh, I'm just a mom or I'm just... Like you have an important job, Scott. You say all I'm doing, I'm not doing. You are raising a child, so um, oh, yeah, you're yeah, that's, really like that helping. takes most of my time. That's for sure. Yeah, you're uh, helping develop the young <laughs> mind so that that person doesn't go out into the world toxic and and gross and muddying things up. So you are changing the world. You know, you literally are changing the world with that. Um, another thing I would say is because we talked about worry. Um, I was taking a class and they said, worrying is like praying for the thing you don't want. Yes. Yes, so exactly. If I start looking, I could, that's what freaks me out. Like if I start looking at these prices and things, you know, like, <laughs> like where, are we uh -huh. going? On where are we going? And my imagination is going wild. I'm really like attracting Absolutely. poverty to me by worrying so much instead of being practical, like worrying, not worrying, but focusing on what I want to manifest. So, and, um, you know, and that's right. We shouldn't feel bad about joy because that's literally your job. You're anchoring in the joy is your job. So complaining all day is not your job. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to be here to anchor in joy. So it's your that, birthright to feel it. It's your birthright to feel love and joy and happiness. That is the original state of being that we were created and designed to be in. It's only because of all of these, you know, neg negative controllers of the world that have set us up and traumatized us and programmed us and, and, and helped us trap these densities inside our body. So that way we can't have that love and joy flow through us properly without actually doing that work, doing that shadow work, you know what I'm saying? But if none of those things were to exist, if we were to exist in harmony with nature and like we used to be, you know, we, we wouldn't even know that we, you know, we wouldn't even have that struggle to allow ourselves to feel joy and if not feel worthy of it, like that worthiness thing, not deserving it, you know, like everyone deserves it. Everyone deserves to feel love and joy, you know, that's what you're creative for. That, absolutely. And not only that, like, <clears throat> People got to cut themselves some breaks too, you know, like especially people in, in, in our community, they, they, they're they very strict on themselves, you know, and then they forget that we're here to enjoy the human experience, you know what I mean? As long with Save the World, I mean, sure, sure, these evil bastards have all of our things corrupt, but they are our things. Like like football, that's our sport. We 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 made this sport. You know, they corrupt it, sure, sure. But it's it's the athleticism of these uh, uh, of sportsmanship. You know, and music like Akeem, <laughs> Akeem fucking makes fantastic music, and they literally stole it from him and use it for corrupt shit. You know what I mean? It, it, they take our things and they hijack them, and they use it for their evil purposes. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we still need to celebrate the things that we create. Our creativity, our, 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 our joy, our love is revered throughout the galaxy. You know what I mean? They, they, they all, they have, we have artwork hanging around the fucking galaxy on people's walls and shit. You know what I mean? They play our songs out there. They probably play an Arkeem songs out there somewhere. People are, they're hijacking the numbers. Oh, that's a bad number. Ooh, that's a bad color. That's a bad symbol. That's like a bad. Thirteen's a lucky number. These are all ours. Yes. Go ahead, Arkin. I was just saying, thirteen's a lucky number. It has to do with the musical notes. Once you get to thirteen, it starts all over again, and it goes back to A. And so it's like you know, it's a positive thing. It's like it's just wow. how everything repeats. Everything's a fractal. It represents that it's lucky, and instead they tell us that it's unlucky. Right. For sure. So anything um, that you've been reading or watching, any type of meditations you've been doing or anything like any anything cool that's been coming into your purview or has it all just been self-produced? Uh, personally, when I was when I was able to go to Egypt, they, uh, something happened to me that I was um, offered to come and learn 
and I was going to be taught these things. But what, what ended up happening to me is I was taught nothing. I was taking places and I was shown a lot of beautiful things. Like I was where I needed to be, but I became self-reliant. And because um, I think what happened, the person said that they wanted to teach me some things. Instead, I think they really wanted to learn from me what I had. But in the process, I decided I'm going to stick this out and do what is good for me. And for, you know, lay. I came to lay foundation. I came to learn how to take people on tours and show them things and, and do meditations. And what happened was my magnet, my, my meditations multiplied in their energy. My meditations grew and I, I kind of made up my mind, like regardless of what anybody is doing or what anybody has or says they're going to give me, that I can rely on myself and I trusted myself. I ended up like going out on my own in Egypt by myself, like, I don't need you guys, fuck that, I'm on my own. <laughs> and the, the last half of my trip, I ended up even staying an extra 10 days and I had like a way better time and I learned to rely on myself that no matter what, I was still getting the same messages like God's on your side, your team is with you, everything's going to work out. So I just let go of the fear of I need these certain people around me to get into the point where it's like, it's okay because I don't need them. What I need is source creator who got my back anyway, right? The creator has my back. My guys, they have my back and they're telling me, you got this. And I ended up doing for myself what I thought someone else was gonna do for me that I didn't really need anyone else. So I'm, wondering how this is working for you because even when it came to photography like I started experimenting with color and exposure and learning and, and I just saw certain parts of myself becoming better but not because of what anybody else did for me it was just there it was just there and so I'm asking how have you seen growth in yourself over the last couple of months. Well, I wanted to tell you real quick that um, my guides were coming in and talking to me when you were just describing what you were going through. And they were saying that this is something that you've done before, that you were in Egypt, that you obviously that you've been there before. And actually this was more like an initiation for you to prove mm -hmm. to yourself that like to bring back those memories. Like it's like doing something like later on you find out like, um, let's say you had amnesia or something and you come back and you find out that you've already walked all those streets. You already, like that the reason you chose all those things is because that's where you had done that before, you know? So that is what they were saying to me. And I just wanted to tell you that real quick. But for me, I actually have seen a lot of growth in myself. I I've been under the most stressful time of my life. Um, but I've, it's made me push myself harder for sure. And, um, I have definitely put meditation um, in back into my life with subliminals, I use a subliminals called Dr. Virtual Seven on YouTube. Love that. And I have, uh, yeah, love him. Yes, I have a playlist. I, and I've used it before. Here's the thing. I've already done some experiments with this guy's subliminals before. And I know for sure that they work, you know. So um, if you, you know, I go to this channel and I have a, a playlist made and you're supposed to listen to them like two or three times a day for 90 days. And that really kicks them in. But I was seeing results already within the first week i sent them yeah. to my mom yeah. we're quantum yeah. now so it's working way oh, yeah oh yeah absolutely and, and um i sent some to even to my mom and she started using it and she started seeing effects already too so it's like that has been the the biggest thing is just i'm so super determined to be able to make a life for myself and my children and um yeah i'm i'm working towards that and uh, yeah, I would say that is probably the most growth that I've seen that I'm just, I'm determined to be able to handle life by myself somehow. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Cause I, I was thinking of like, you're like, if I meet this person, I'll be happy. If I start a business with this person, then it'll work. And we start to externalize all of our goals to be like, it has to do with this other person. And that other person is your higher self. It's like this, this part of you that you need to discover that you're like, no, actually, I literally went through this process of saying, 
why are you saying that if you get this person or if you meet this person or if you connect with this person that you can have the things that you want? That I had to like, like, wait a minute. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> that sounds false. But one thing I want to say, Dr. Virtual 7, if, if you haven't heard him, you need to get on there and get that nanobot video that he got. And when it, it makes those tones, you can feel those nanobots being destroyed. You can wow. feel the tingling in your head. I have had to get, I, the first time I did it, I, my eyes were blinking and I was like, my body was twitching. I could feel the nanobots being destroyed. And then I revisited it. Um, um, it might've been earlier this year and you can feel it. My cat will be twitching like we're good. <laughs> Dr. Virtual 7 is real. That was like one of the first meditations that um, the video recording meditations that I was suggested when I was going through my discovery. Another thing, because you said subliminals, I've gotten to the point where my meditations, I record them and put them on my YouTube channel private. I listen to them when I'm sleeping. Your voice will resonate out and vibrate out to the into the yeah. universe. So imagine you've already said it once, but if every night you go to bed, you're, you're doing your own meditation for yourself and you're hearing your own voice, but you're also talking to creation over and over and over every night. So I've found that that has been a very powerful tool for me, that subliminals. But what about writing your own messages and listening to it yourself? So that was just really cool. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, that's a really powerful way to do it, too. When you do them yourself, you record them yourself and listening to it at nighttime or during those moments where you're just about to fall asleep in that theta brainwave state like that is when it gets in the deepest. So I actually do. I actually do the same thing. That's when I listen to my subliminals the most is at nighttime. So that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So with you two guys, are you noticing some growth? Are you having to let some people go kick some people out? Um, who are living in your mind rent free religion? Um, she just want to pat yourself on the back. Uh, you yes. froze up. Scott or Akeem? Akeem. You froze uh -huh. up for like the whole question. <laughs> oh my God. So. Oh my gosh, it's happening again. I think you've seen change, things that you're proud of, and you maybe just want to give yourself a pat on the back. Have you had to release some things or some people so that you can move forward? Sure. Um, I guess the biggest thing that I'm realizing is like, like, you kind of can't care what other people think. And you have to be with the people that you need, not necessarily the people that you want. And you need to understand that, like, um, yeah, like some people aren't going to understand you. Some people are going to think, I mean, it, it, but that's the only way for you to find your people. To the people that you belong to is to truly be yourself and I, that's something that I've been learning about I guess and also yeah I've just been I've just been learning that like people are really they've got it set up so people are really polarized and people think that like if you disagree on like one certain issue or you look at one thing like slightly different than this other person they try to make it look like well that means that this person is like shit and then you shouldn't be able to get along with them at all and they have this really polarized thing going on where everyone's like and i'm like i'm like breaking out of that like i'm realizing like how silly that is like how stupid it is like how like the truth and facts and like how the world works like isn't like this like black and white thing like things are always really complicated and what the mind control system does is like turn stuff into like little talk talking points or sound bites and they're just trying to get people like outraged and so like i think like, like that goes back to like finding your bliss too like we also need to understand that a lot of the outrage in the world is like you know they're trying to manufacture that state of fear so we don't want to give into it but yeah, I feel like I kind of went on a tangent, but I hope I answered the question good. 
Yeah, that was such a small answer. Okay. I'm gonna tell you this: what you hit on was um, the the number one thing about be being yourself. Like we're afraid to lose friends sometimes, right? And we cannot be afraid to lose friends because you're exactly right. The more that you're yourself, the more you move out the garbage and bring in the people that really do resonate with you. They can really inspire you, motivate you, and um, who understand your journey. But two, what I've noticed a lot of times people with their outrage, a lot of times people are trying to recruit us for their fight. Like, I'm, I'm mad about this. And then they want to tell you the story so you can be mad about it. So you can join them and walk in their little army and, and, and do whatever kind of movement, like to put you in their movement. And so I think it's like, we have to be extremely careful what we're taking in from who, like, why did they tell me this? What's the purpose behind it? How does it help me or hurt me? Or does it even matter? Because a lot of things that we are upset about, like I say flat earth, I'll just say this. I really don't give a damn if the earth is flat or not, because as long as I'm not about to fall off, I'm good, right? So me <laughs> arguing with you about whether it's flat or round doesn't make a difference, because unless we on a mission right now and we're about to fall off and we got to figure out the math and the science behind it, that's an absolutely useless argument. And so it's like Pulp Fiction, a lot of useless arguments that people would drag you into. And then at the meantime, they're just really sucking off your energy. So that's that's kind of how I find it. I don't know if anybody had anything to expand on that where you've noticed people really just coming to you with some nonsense and they, <laughs> and then you're like, <laughs> and what? what? What are we supposed to do about it? Because some of this stuff, like, you'll never know the answer to it until you die. <laughs> and maybe not even then, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, Scott. <laughs> that was a great answer. <laughs> I second Scott's answer. <laughs> so um, has anything moved you lately um, as far as the news of disclosure or no, let's not even go there yet. Let's go with any movies, any programs that you watch. Cause I know a lot of people don't watch movies, but I just watched they cloned Tyrone. No spoilers. <laughs> I'm watching that right after this with my girlfriend. We're having pizza. Oh, and man. I don't want to fucking ruin it for you, man, but good. Okay, God, to to with the okay, so there, there's stuff outside of that, but woo. I tell you, man. I mean, and that's then, and then, disclosure, right? Like, you know, I mean, it's chock full of disclosure. It's it's it's, it's like brimming. <laughs> it's like, you know where I would go with this? Of course, is that for movies that are made for and by black people, I don't watch most of them because I don't like Medea and and all the trauma porn. Mm. It is in most of the movies that kind of pro, uh, uh, pro propagate the negative images for Black people, right? So this was like one of the first ones where they were like just a little bit, you know, kind of dropping stuff, but you still made the girl a prostitute. Still got a oh, drug. I think, I, think, I think that was the whole point. I'm gonna say, that's why we're not going to say anything about what happened. <laughs> a prostitute. There's a pimp and there's a drug deal. And I'm like, okay. And then there's a little bit of disclosure. So they was like, nah, we not having letting y'all have all of it. We just go. <laughs> I, my my oh, biggest argument is, can black people play with some dolphins? Can we own a zoo? Can we be an astronaut wife? Can we do some of that stuff instead of like all this? But we can move from that because we don't want to mess it up for our kids. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Some, some Barbie. But thought, one, thing, one thing I will say about that, it, it is ironic that Jamie Foxx is in this movie and then uh, he apparently has all these health problems and he comes back out not really looking like Jamie Foxx. Maybe they clone Jamie. Weird. That's pretty weird. That's the same thing. 
Yeah, so it's very ironic, you know, and this movie dropped yeah. right at the same time. It's, it's just, yeah, they it's didn't wait close. till now to, to clone Jamie. They probably started when he... Oh, was... I'm sure they got many clones of Jamie, just like in the movie, but we're not going to go into that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't know what to think. It's kind of, for me, it's like that whole thing with Jada and Will Smith. It's actors acting like actors act when they act it. And I think what happens is for a lot of people in the uh, Black community, they want to support the movies, but because maybe they're not as, you know, as, um, not really understanding or accepting as much of aliens and clones. They, you know, there's some of us that are, we're in it, but then there's a lot of us that are like, get out of here. And so to them, they're not going to real, I, I guess, really get that you're, totally being manipulated. I guess anybody who's not really into disclosure is not gonna get like, guess what, it's all a scam, it's all manipulation. Even if they show you some disclosure, cause I think a lot of people think when you watch a dis movie and it has disclosure in it, they think that people playing the characters are actually good and it's like, no, it's called plain sight. Yeah, the people in the movie aren't necessarily Caring and reaching out to you, trying to give you a message. It's just plain sight that that is the job. They have to show you the truth. And I, it over. As, far as, as far as the average person goes, you know, I I, I truly believe right now that it, it 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 literally is the hijacking of our co-creative consciousness that's going on here because alone, the average person, they know all this to be true. You know, you can talk to anybody and they all know it to be true, but when in public or when talking to a group of people, they go with the company line. You know what I'm saying? And and it's 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 it seems like some sort of mass mass con mind control. You know what I mean? Some sort of mass pumping of frequency that's keeping people attuned to this company line. You know what I mean? Because Nobody, I, I think deep down, nobody doesn't think that cloning's not real. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they don't think that aliens are not real or all these things that they see on sci-fi things are not real, but they are afraid to say it out loud or they, they can't say it out. I don't know. It's weird. You know That's what I mean? Because, because what I'm saying, what a lot of people say <laughs> it's, it's on television, they say, that's just TV. Yes, I get that. I get that. But that's like them telling themselves that. You know what I'm saying? Them trying to tell themselves to reassure themselves, oh, that can't they be talk themselves you know off I mean? But deep down, they know it to be true, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I have a good example of that. Um, you know, for many years of my life, I was too afraid to believe in aliens. I had to literally tell myself it wasn't happening because I would be terrified at nighttime. You know, after watching the show Sightings, when I was like obsessed with that show when I was younger. And so um, there there came a point in my life where I just had to tell myself, you know what, I'm just going to have to do this so that I don't have to be afraid at nighttime. I'm just going to have to do this for a while. And, um, and it took quite a long time for me to be willing to open back up to that again. But when I did, it was like, duh. It was like, I can't believe I sat there and pretended that whole time, you know, like, like that wasn't the real thing. But, you know, real quick, I wanted to name another show that I think is really good for disclosure that I don't know if a lot of people watch or not. Um, Black Mirror on Netflix has a new season. Mm -hmm. And that um, show is amazing. Season, yeah, it's amazing. Every I, I love I love the entire show. But um, I have to say they have some really, really good episodes this season. And um, my favorite episode, though, is um, White Christmas. If anyone's interested in that one is crazy where they actually duplicate a con your consciousness and they take it out and they put it into what's called a cookie. And that cookie version of you is going to be responsible for running your house, like the all the different very light thing preferences and how you like your toast made and what time you want to be woke up at and all this stuff. But the consciousness that is in the cookie, it's still the same as if it was you. So it doesn't understand why it doesn't have a body anymore is basically you force yourself into servitude, you know? And um, anyway, that's just the beginning part of it, but it goes on to show some more of the dangers of that, of what you can do with that. That so, sounds yeah. like you get home when you're driving and you just, you done drove 20 miles and you don't even remember your trip. 
um, that 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 the altar that comes out when you're cooking and cleaning and you have to do uh, remedial tasks. Autopilot. You're like, you know, but then you're out somewhere else. Your actual consciousness is somewhere else. I forget. I think they even talked about that at the conference, didn't it? Mm-hmm. I think so. That, that alternate that comes forward to do, you know. The, the I heard. Time. I heard that. I heard that every every person pretty much has a minimum of twelve altars. Actually, that's what I heard at one point. That we all have. They're just different versions of ourselves, just from having been through various experiences in life. But on average, it's about twelve. I totally agree. Um, I've had people walk up to me. This one girl, she said, "When we worked together at the hospital, you did this for me, or you said that to me." Even seeing her face, I don't remember who she is. Wow. I don't remember one thing or interaction. I don't even remember her being at my job. And she said, you affected me. You impacted me. You said this to me. And I'm like, uh, I have no idea who this girl is. And we've been friends now for about three years. And I still have not one memory that sparks when she did wow. t- from speaking to her, not one. Wow. My sister has told me, like, you did this. And I'm like, maybe that was me, number 37. This is me, number 64. I don't remember, not one. So there's just these times, there are things that I remember. And then there's things that I know, I know have happened to me. And I have a physical scar to prove it. My mom showed me how it was basically impossible for it to have happened. And I'm like, I have no idea. How do I have a scar to prove it? So, anyway. I could, you know, maybe I need my own season of Black Mirror. But anyway, <laughs> um, I'm going to let our friend in and we can talk about some galactic news. Uh, it's going to be like a family reunion. Uh-huh. And we're going to welcome in Reverend. What's up? The man of many names. What's up, Scott? What up, brother? How are you? Thank we you, Sandra. Also on Facebook Live. So um, let me hold on. Let me separate this recording because I know Jermaine like to act up. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Live on Facebook. Oh, man, I did not mean to do that. I didn't mean to break up the actual. I meant to break up the recording. Like stop recording and start it over. 